So, on the second travel trip of my gap year, I headed up the east coast of Australia for eight weeks. From crazy islands to long overnight buses to meeting the best people, I'm so honoured to take you guys along on the adventure. So this vlog unfortunately has quite a tragic start. We arrived in Mission Beach hoping to go to the shops and just get some food from a cafe or a shop or anywhere, only to find out that everywhere was closed for Australia Day and the entire next day for the bank holiday. We were in the middle of nowhere with the pouring rain. We had some stale white bread from the free food shelf. We were actually saved by this amazing girl working at the hostel who shared her pasta with us. She literally saved me. So, so calm. And then our skydive was cancelled because of the weather. But the lovely people at our hostel recommended that we do a chocolate factory tour. So that is what we did. It was really interesting learning about Australia's cocoa production. Bring on the rainforest hike. We went with two Dutch girls that we became friends with from the chocolate factory tour. And it is such a small world because they were actually on the boat on the Whit Sundays with our Fraser Island family. So they knew all the people that we knew, which is mad. So yeah, we just explored the beautiful rainforests. Yes, we did see some creepy golden orb spiders, but we also saw some beautiful flowers, just some amazing scenery, despite the rain and the wind. Chelsea working at the hostel then fed us again. Angel, how kind and generous can you be? Paying her in chocolate. <laughs> Good morning. Pretty tired today because despite saying we were gonna have an early night, we didn't. Um, we went to bed at like midnight. Now we've woken up at like 6.30 and it is quite exciting though because today we are going white water rafting, yes! Um, so we're just packing for that right now. We've got our swimming outfits and shorts on. I need to go run and have my, have my breakfast. I have two bananas, but I'm really hoping it's not canceled because the weather is still quite wet. Your gal had her bananas and no, it was not canceled. Yes! This is like one of the best things I did on the whole East Coast. Spinach white water rafting. Yeah. Yeah. I did it and it was amazing. It was so good, but this one fell into the, into the river. It's fine because we saved her. In the evening we socialised with two amazing other Dutch girls. I ran through the rain trying to get back. There is our makeshift drying rack. Didn't really work because it was still raining. And then we went on to make curry. There was a power cut in Mission Beach because of how bad the storm was. So we cooked by candlelight guys. Not very practical but certainly I did. So impressed with us. This actually looks so good. I think this is the most adventurous thing we've cooked so far. So I'm just sat here having my dessert. My chocolate from the back from the farm post yesterday. It's so good. Me and Kerry are basically having a full on chocolate tasting again. We're like, mm. so good. I've already eaten two rows. We are exhausted, but it was incredible. I wish I'd had like a GoPro on my head or something so I could have filmed it. The scenery was like something out of Avatar or Lord of the Rings. Um, and we got really lucky. All the people on our boat were so nice. We had like a good team. We had Dazza, our tour guide, he was awesome. Like out of all the incredible things we've done, Today was one of my favourite dates. And where we head on our last Greyhound bus. I don't know how it's come around this quickly, but it somehow has. And as it continued to rain, I packed up my stuff and got ready to go. I am feeling so unfit and just generally sluggish because I feel like I've not exercised in a long time and I've generally eaten quite poorly. And it's going to the stage where I kind of crave exercise. And every now and then I'm trying to do some like yoga or just odd like squats or some random like body weight exercises and this morning I just did some yoga on the floor of this um, room. A bit more health than eating like two huge bars of chocolate in two days. We then waited for our last Greyhound bus of the trip. So weird. And they actually shut off all the roads to Cairns about five days after we left for Cairns so we got super lucky to be able to go there. Like the storms were just crazy. Yay, we're just walking to our hostel, our last, last destination. What? We've got the surf. Very humid and muggy here. You can tell it's like the tropics. So we've just arrived and like, oh, this hostel seems so nice. The guy at reception was lovely. I've got this room and it's just, oh, it feels so like clean. Look, a towel guys, you get given a towel. Plan, we're gonna head to the supermarket, even though we pass loads of like fancy looking cafes. We're like, nah, 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 
on the budget. So we're gonna go to Coles, I think, because it's nearby, grab some food for lunch, just like a roll or something like that, and then head and meet our family. We're staying at Gilligan's, which is like known for being the party party hostel. So I think we're gonna go to Gilligan's tonight for like a party. But yeah, most of our family are like leaving tomorrow. They're going to Sydney or they're going to Melbourne. It's like our last night being reunited. Solo travel is so different to traveling with someone else. They're both such unique and different experiences and I don't think there's one that's necessarily better than the other. And I think in some ways you need to do both to appreciate the other one. Because there are moments when you're solo traveling where you're like, desperate to have your friend there. There are moments when you're traveling with someone else where you kind of just crave like alone time as well. I think it's been so interesting for me to do Australia with Kerry, who I love and who I've been friends with for like eight years. I like, come on, you can't travel and not become really close. We were sat in these two jungle baths in the middle of the jungle, both naked in a bubble bath, just sat there chatting about really deep stuff in life and like little bonding moments like that are not in everyday reality. It definitely makes you closer as friends. But I also think it's impossible to spend 24 hours of every single day with someone and not have moments where you disagree or you're, you find there's like a little bit of tension just because you're both really tired. And if something goes wrong, like it's, it's easy to not necessarily blame the other person, but to have like annoyances come up and then that creates tension where you don't want, you just don't want to talk to anyone. And then obviously because you've got your friend there, it's hard, like it can be hard to be, to remember to be patient. I've learned so much about myself and how I deal with things because I think I tend to, I've always liked to deal with things alone. Like if things go wrong, I really like to just hole up and deal with it alone. But obviously traveling with someone, you share everything, like the problems, solving them, meeting people, everything you share. It's taught me to compromise actually, not in that I haven't done things that I wanna do, but just if one person want, doesn't really wanna go out that night, you can go out on your own, you know, that's a compromise in itself, or you can just reevaluate and be like, oh, what does this person need? Like, can we find a way to make both people happy? And now I feel like if I was ever to live with anyone, this has just been a good test. All the friends we've made, that's something else actually that's really nice about traveling the two of you, is when you solo travel and you meet all these amazing people along the way, because you were the only one who met all those people, you can never really talk about those people again with anyone. Like, oh, do you remember this person? They were so amazing. No, you're, like, no one else remembers meeting them. Whereas when you're traveling the two of you, you meet the same people. So you can kind of reminisce and be like, oh, do you remember in Sydney when we met those lovely people? And oh, do you remember this inside joke from this place? But yeah, if you guys are watching and you are thinking, oh, do I travel with my friend or do I travel alone? I think both are equally valuable. I think you've got to be careful with the person that you choose to travel with because if you're too different in what you and how you want to spend your time and how social you want to be, if you want to go out, if you don't want to go out, your eating habits, everything, if it's too different, I think there's more tension in it can be harder to make it work but there's always compromise and if you're good friends like it'll always work out in the end equally solo travel is so valuable i think you learn just as much about yourself and in all those problem solving moments it really is just you so you have to work it out on your own i can see why for a lot of people it's easier to have traveled with someone and then travel alone because there's i think there's two two different things to be scared of the first is traveling and backpacking and the second is being alone um and then if you do the two together at once it can be, it can feel quite intimidating which is what i did and it was scary but also so worth it but then i can also see now how if you traveled with a friend it could feel harder to to now solo travel because you find a pattern and a routine of relying on being with someone else and splitting costs and doing all these things with them so whichever way you end up doing it I'd say you need to do both, guys. You need to solo travel at some point and you need to travel with someone. And I'd say if you can help it, don't backpack in a big group because you just won't meet as many people. I'd say travel with one person, if anything. Maybe, maybe two, but I would say one is ideal if you still wanna be approachable and meet lots of people and be open. Because I think if you're too big, big of a group, it's kind of intimidating. Lunch time. I had a cheeky roll, some rice cakes, spinach and hummus. That night we also met up with the fam. When you're sharing, this is my side, this is Kerry. What are we gonna do, Buffett? 
Kerry and I shared a giant plate of buffet food, a bit cheeky. And then we went to Gilligan's and had our last night with the fam. Time for fun! That guy's got a milk, isn't he? No! Miss mum and dad already. It's actually crazy because Kerry's in Asia right now and she's just met up with Uncle Tom and she's meeting up with mom and dad like next week. So you do keep in touch. I'm currently planning to go see Uncle Antoine in Normandy in France because I'm heading to France next week. The next day we did Uncle Brian's tour. The Daintree Rainforest is the oldest rainforest in the world and we went on the Cape Tribulation tour and I was buzzing. Kerry was exhausted and wanted to sit on her own and just listen to music, which is fine. So I sat next to this amazing girl, Stella. We're just currently on the party bus. Okay, and then what cuts are coming? <laughs> Start again. Right. Hi guys. Hi, this is Stella. Hi, I'm Stella. We're on a cake tribulation trip. We are. We're in the house. We have We have, yes, uh, we, we had a lot of good tunes. Loza is on the tune. I've been banging out those tunes. She won a singing competition last night. What a small world, guys. This girl right here is from the town next to mine. We met out and I've been seeing Stella everywhere for the last like week or two. I've just seen her on ferries. And as you saw, like such a stalker. Yeah. We kept making eye contact like time. Yeah. Yeah. We like, oh, it's you again. Yeah, because we hadn't even introduced ourselves. Yeah. I'd always say hi because we'd like chat a little bit. Exactly. And now we're sat next to each other. Yeah. Scott! Hey! Hey! hey. Do you remember, oh. remember this crazy guy here? And there's Kerry over there. Hey! Loza up front. Oh, Loza. Oh, amazing tour, guys. Oh, guys. He's got uh, 280,000 followers on YouTube here, so uh, yeah. Uh, so, what have you got to say to Jade's 280,000 followers on YouTube, Uncle Brian? Hello. Oh, kangaroo. Oh, I'm just joking. <laughs> Dad, looking after the baby. Oh, she's no Perfect's what you're searching for, then just stay the same. So, <laughs> tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I want a hat, I want a hat, I want a hat. What I really, really, really want is to get the car. You gotta get with my friend. You have got to be. This looks actually really good. What are they? She a beauty. Yeah, well. yeah, we are on the Croc River okay. and we are looking for wild crocodiles. No. Yeah, just see what you Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> With somebody who loves you. Uncle Brian's arranges loads of activities while you're on the bus, which is so much fun. And one of them was being given pens and being able to draw whatever you want on the windows. It's been such a good day. Uh, I'm just about to go to bed and I am shattered. Like, I think I had three hours sleep last night and today has just been go, go, go. And then wake up really early for our intro to scuba dive, which is gonna be exciting. If you go to Cairns, I cannot recommend enough the Uncle Brian's tour specifically of the Daintree Rainforest and Cape Tribulation. Like, it was so good. And I'm really glad that that girl, Stella, who we kept randomly seeing everywhere, I'm so glad I finally actually spoke to her and got to know her because she was great. And we just said goodbye to Scott. And it definitely feels like everything is kind of coming to an end. Like our little phrase of fam has now offic officially split off. Like everyone has split off. It's kind of nice when you're traveling, the fact that things are so temporary because I feel like you just appreciate everything. During breakfast, I was regretting my life choices and becoming really terrified of the concept of scuba diving. So we are currently on our way to the reef terminal. We're doing it with a company called Reef Quest. And apparently Stella, who we met yesterday, she did this exact tour a few days ago and she said it was really good. We were just saying what we think about Cairns and I actually quite like it. Like we haven't really seen that much of the city yet. I love that it's tropical as well. Like it's just so random, all the cool green trees. I mean, look at this random bird on the floor here. It's the weirdest bird. We found the boat filled in like a hundred safety forms. On a rainy day. 
I know it sounds really dumb, but I didn't realize that you couldn't fly like 24 hours after scuba diving. This is like gold dust. We suited up, we had a safety talk, we learnt some of the symbols. There's Kerry getting ready. Scary stuff. We're all suited up. Kerry's rocking the lip that I'm going to be rocking in a second. Let's go be scuba divers. They had this rope that attached to the boat and we would slowly, slowly go down just to acclimatise to the water pressure. We had to pass the test of being able to do three skills before we were allowed to go deeper. You had to learn to repressurise your ears just because of the depth. You had to be able to empty your goggles of water. You had to be able to take the regulator out of your mouth and put it back in. It's a very weird thing relying on air that is on your back. It's kind of terrifying. I genuinely cannot describe this experience in words. It was like entering another world. It was like a dream. All you can hear in your ears is the sound of you breathing. Like, I've never been more in the moment, I swear. We love Paolo so much. He's such a bang. Honestly, guys, if you if you go on the same one as we did, uh, what was it called? Reef Quest. Have Paolo, because he is just the nicest guy. He makes you feel so safe. Love him. So this is our current reality. <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah, we're just under a bus stop right now, but it is pouring with rain. We're just walking along the street singing Umbrella by Brianna. Cairns is literally having the most rain that it's had since like 1901. We're running to the hostel. Look at this, it's to choke pasta tonight. Good morning. Even though I've had the most hours of sleep that I've had in a while, I'm so tired. I literally feel shattered today, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I haven't been sleeping that much recently, so like when my body suddenly has sleep, it's like trying to catch me up, but I didn't have enough sleep to fully catch up. Today I'm actually buzzing because we're doing another Uncle Brian's tour, and it was so much fun the other day, and we're doing the Waterfalls one today. I have my classic breakfast, and I found this sign kind of funny, this YHA one. I washed up my dishes to so look who's younger, cooler, smarter. It is raining a lot again today, so. I've tried to plan my outfit accordingly. I've gone for some really short shorts so that hopefully my raincoat basically covers it all. We're going in waterfalls. I'm gonna get wet anyway. What's so crazy in Australia as well is that despite the fact it looks so overcast and it's raining so much, the sun is so strong and the UV rays are so strong. So you just get massively sunburned even though it looks like it would be impossible to. Yeah, gang, but normally when it really floods that entire section- Because of the rains and the storms, the waterfalls were so flooded. I became such good friends with a girl on the bus. She'd just been to Bali, so it was amazing hearing about Bali. It was like her second day in Australia, so I was imparting my knowledge. She'd catch you off guard and drag you down stream into the environment really, really quick. Normally people go in and swim there, but we can't because it's just so flooded. Apparently flash floods can happen in like a minute and go up, the water level go up by two meters and sweep you downstream. We had lunch and then we visited the Herbal Essences famous waterfall. This is the hair flick waterfall. The one where you dip your long hair in the water and have that majestic curve of spray. <laughs> Harry became quite close with this girl from Texas. So here they are going under the waterfall. It's actually so scary. You just have to kind of like go for it and not overthink it. Guys, I lost my flip-flops. No, how do you leave your shoes at a waterfall? I was barefoot for the rest of the day in the mud. Welcome to Uncle Brian's tour. She's had a fantastic day in the wet tropics, liquid sunshine all around. Keep Yay, it on, Jay. She's awesome. <laughs> it's so cute. I just went to reception. I just spoke to the guy at reception and we had like a really long chat about skydiving and bungee jumping and he was just giving me loads of advice and I was asking questions and it was just really nice. So I feel nervous, but I also feel okay now i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it oh my god guys i was skydiving i was gonna jump out of a plane where i go i go get ready and i'm gonna go get in a plane i think it's going ahead so what hang on miss jade um okay so i'm just walking towards the plane don't really know what i'm doing right now i'm a bit terrified um, you're gonna jump out of a perfectly good airplane are you crazy yeah, i don't know what i'm doing yeah. i'm kind of a bit delirious to be honest <laughs> anything you want to say to everyone watching at home before we go uh pray for me <laughs> we pray for you yeah, yeah well, moral support yeah well. alex will be out there helping us out too That's
I don't know if you can tell, but I was terrified. Like, I literally get the same shivers when I watch this back. I was second in the queue, so I had to watch them jump out. Oh! oh, oh, oh. We're back on ah, solid ground. You did it. it. Yeah, yeah, I did it. How good was that? It was actually amazing. Like, yeah. guys, you need to skydive. Yeah. You need to do it. Yeah. yeah. I would do it again. For sure. Like, it was terrifying, but I would do it again. <laughs> yeah. Which part did you like the best? The free, the free fall. fall. Getting to see Alex in oh. free fall was the best, wasn't it? Yeah, I was like, oh my god, he's there. Like, <laughs> we're all falling. Yeah. Like, what? You already said you're going to do it again. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to do it again one day yeah. when there's not this cloud yeah. I don't get pelted But the clouds extra experience. Thanks for joining us Scott of Australia here in Cairns. Yay. This girl is awesome. She oh. did an awesome job and we'll see you next time. Woo Thank you. So Carrie landed a bit of a soggy patch. <laughs> 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 Show, reach over your face. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've kind of wiped it off. Here I am, I went to the toilet and I just sat there and like partied to myself like, oh my God, I did it, I did it, she did it, yes. Even though it was wet and rainy, the staff were amazing. <laughs> I'm eating this breakfast as a person who has skydived. Kerry and I walked around Cairns for a bit, which was nice. So somehow it is my last night with Kerry. It is our last meal together. Um, and we've both already eaten, but I just bought us two mangoes to celebrate our love of the Australian mangoes. I'm just gonna sit and eat them in the hostel. It's crazy how quick this trip's gone. I feel like mangoes mean something. I didn't really feel much because we just kind of sat by the pool and chatted and reminisced our experience. And then super early that morning, I left Kerry. We had an emotional goodbye and I went and bungee jumped on my own. As I climbed the steps, looked at the view and got ready, I actually thought to myself, right, if these are my last moments on this earth, at least I'm in a pretty place, living my life. You're okay? Feel a little bit blue. All right. First time bunny jumping, yeah? First time. All right. Beautiful day. Here we go. Everybody praying for the end of time. Everybody hoping they can get down and build me up. And I'm the only one here for the sunrise one, so that was terrifying, but... And now I get a luxury fruit platter, apparently. Could not be better. From bungee jumping, I rushed to the airport. First time flying, completely on my own. It was so weird not having Kerry all of a sudden, and I was like, wow, the last leg is on my own. Melbourne, here we come.